welcome back. Uh, we are on the next important chapter uh, that is called as uh, network techniques. Now, this is an important chapter in the sense uh, not only important from the point of view of exam. Whenever you are doing any project in life, this tool is going to be extremely essential. It will help you to answer several questions which I will come to little later. Now, this is network analysis. We are going to do only two types of network analysis in this class. That is CPM and PERT. CPM stands for the long form for CPM is critical path method. And PERT stands for project evaluation and review technique. There are a lot of common things between these two techniques. Uh, what are the common things? What are the differences we will come to as we start doing it? Uh, the situations in which CPM is applied and the situations in which PERT is applied are however different. In the sense, some some type of projects require CPM as a tool, some type of projects will require PERT as a tool. There are a lot of things which are common, the network analysis and the calculations are qu quite similar, but there is a probabilistic concept in the context of project evaluation and review technique or PERT. Sometimes it is also known as program evaluation and review technique, both mean the same thing. These are basically very simple tools of drawing a network diagram. For example, if you want to start a small project, now, Make in India is catching up. As a result of Make in India, suppose you are motivated to start some mobile repair shop or any such small business. There are a lot of activities which need to be done before you are able to start the project. If I want to manufacture, for example, a small product, such as a water bottle for the bottled water, if I am manufacturing the bottles, for example, uh, what are the machineries required, what is the cost, several issues need to be answered before you are actually getting into the project deciding what is your contribution and so on. So let me just recollect what are the various activities that I need to do. The activities are some physical processes that you need to do before you are able to say that, okay, I am starting the project for bottle making. Firstly, you must have a place where you are going to set up the project. That is land. Sometimes it could be a ready-made shed. Sometimes you may have to construct a building of your own depending on the nature of your project. Then construct the building. Before construction of the building, obviously the land must be transferred in your name. The legal process of the land getting transferred in your name must be completed. Then you are preparing a plan for the building with the help of architect or maybe your own simple plan of a shed. Then you must estimate the materials required, find out the building cost, what, is, what it is going to be on an estimated basis. Then what are the machineries which are required for starting the project? Who supplies the machineries? Place orders with them start construction of the building simultaneously, place orders. If any loans are required from the institutional sector, for example, banks or state finance corporation, make applications for going to these institutions for the loan. See that the process of loan is also done simultaneously. By the time you are ready for implementation of the project, the loans also should be through, otherwise you will be stuck up for funds. So that's also an activity which you need to do. Then when you start construction, simultaneously maybe you can place orders for machineries. Depending on the machinery schedule of uh, you know, delivery, you can place orders. If something is ready-made, available, off the shelf, then there is no need of placing an order beforehand. Otherwise, sometimes the machineries have to be manufactured to your specifications and therefore some long gestation period is involved. After machineries are installed, you will uh, have electricity connected. Simultaneously, you will try out the machines install them and then try out, take trial runs and then commercial run. In the meantime, you must obtain all kind of clearances and approvals such as sales tax registration if the product attracts sales tax, excise registration if the product attracts excise and so on. So there are innumerable activities even if you want to start a small project. And you know, you will notice once you do this kind of analysis that only some of these activities are very, very important or critical. In the sense, which are the activities which I cannot delay, which are the activities which I can afford to delay, delay a little bit. All this information will be available the moment we draw a network diagram. All this information is going to be easily available to you. Just one look at the network diagram and all the questions will be answered. Okay. Now, what are the main components of a network diagram? In fact, frankly speaking, there are only two components of a network diagram, whether it is CPM or PERT. The calculations are carried out differently in context of CPM and PERT that we will come to. But the two components of any network diagram under CPM or PERT are same, that is an arrow and a circle. Arrows are called as activities, 
circles are called as events or nodes okay so using these two simple tools of a circle for an event or a node and an activity represented by an arrow you will be able to get all this information so apart from appearing for the exam this tool will be also useful to for you to do anything on your own okay so we will go through the entire technique we'll see how it is analyzed and all that so importance of cpm and pert cannot be uh, st stressed more i'll only go to some of the questions which uh, it answers for example how does it help me how this cpm uh, pert analysis helps me i have written mainly points concerning cpm pert i have not yet introduced okay how long will it take to complete my project if i start the project today and if i know roughly what are the uh, durations of each activity which are going into making of this project how long will it take when will i be able to implement the project finally this is one important question that you would like to answer which are the most important activities of this project important in the sense i i call them critical in the language of cpm critical activities are those which i cannot delay in other words there are certain activities in the course of uh, the network diagram when we draw the network diagram we will come to know that these activities i cannot afford to delay any delay in respect of these activities will result in a delay in the project this is not the case with all the activities in the network i'll come to that can i delay some of the activities without delaying the project you will find very surprisingly that you have estimated that an activity will take about 3 weeks or 4 weeks you can afford to delay it without delaying the project this is very very important for you you will know what are therefore non critical activities critical activities are those which i cannot afford to delay non critical activities are those which i can afford to delay if there is a delay automatically taking place in this activity it is not going to hurt me so much as the critical activities if they are delayed okay next uh, are any activities getting delayed now i am now that i am implementing the project when i draw a review network diagram are any activities lagging behind schedule and any one of them are they critical if they are critical i must be concerned about them because critical activities are those if they are delayed my project is going to be delayed but if the delay is in respect of non critical or unimportant activities it would not matter so much okay my project can still be completed on time so are any activities delayed if they are delayed what are the corrective steps which i can take can i shift some resources from other activities onto these activities and ensure that they are done in time these are the questions which the network diagram will help us to answer can i do it earlier for example my project implementation says that okay i'll take one year can i do it in 11 months instead of 12 months if 11 months is an important for example if you want to start a project for some seasonal product and the season starts after 11 months i should be ready for the market after 11 months not 12 months because by the time you are completing the project in 12 months maybe a part of the season is lost therefore particularly for seasonal product do i can i do this project earlier than required yes this network will help us to tell that answer also and in that case if i want to do the project earlier than its required schedule can we do it at an extra cost or can we do it within the same cost if any extra cost is involved how much will be the extra cost these are the questions which will be able to answer after doing the analysis of cpm so some important questions i have listed in fact there are more questions that it will answer and the tool is so simple so very effective and yet so simple that you will be surprised at the end of learning cpm and pert okay so i'll come to cpm initially we'll do only cpm after completing cpm we'll go to pert but pert is for larger projects larger projects such as you know and which have a very long gestation period long implementation period such as typically i would say the infrastructure projects for example constructing a highway connecting two cities by an express way like see mumbai pune the express way when it was started there were tremendous amount of delays in doing this project for that matter a konkan railway konkan railway when it was started from uh, mumbai to goa and up to karnataka thereafter there were tremendous amount of delays in this project by it was delayed by several years now such projects which have long gestation period we use a technique called as pert to analyze as to what are the probabilities of various things happening what is the probability that i'll be able to complete the project by 2017 or 2018 for that matter okay so these are questions which will be additional questions which the pert will help us to uh, understand and answer but before that the simpler of the two techniques cpm is what we are starting with so now cpm coming to cpm the long form is critical path method a very simple method actually 
and there are only two main components of uh, uh, the CPM network diagram. The network diagram will comprise of only two components. For example, this is called as an activity. This activity, it goes in this direction in the sense it will start here and it will end here. Okay. So, for example, today's lecture, if it is starting at 7 a.m. and ending at, let's say, 10 a.m., the duration of this lecture is 3 hours. Okay. It starts at 7 a.m., ends at 10 a.m. And what happens between the two times, 7 a.m. and 10 a.m., is an activity by the name lecture. Okay. So, a lecture is taking place between 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. The duration of this lecture is 3 hours. The name of the activity is lecture on OR. Okay. And it is represented by an arrow like this. So, an arrow in our network diagram represents an activity, a physical process which is going to consume some effort, which is going to consume some resources, which is going to consume some time. Okay. Now, another component, important component of the network, the second important component is a circle. Circle we write to denote an event. Event is nothing but a point in time. For example, 7 a.m. when I say the lecture starts at 7 a.m. and ends at 10 a.m., 7 a.m. is an event. 10 a.m. is an event. It's a point in time. In a day's schedule, for example, the different clock times are events. In a month schedule, the different dates are events. For example, if I am in the month of January, 15th January 2016 is an event. 31st January 2016 is another event and the gap between the two events is 31 minus 15 that is 16 days duration and this 16 days could represent an activity. For example, if you are studying for costing or for that matter if you are studying for another paper in BMS. Okay, So, these are the activities which you are going to carry out and the activities will typically start let us say on 15th January 2016 and end on 31st January 2016. So, 16 days duration of this activity, what is the activity called as studying for OR or studying for costing, whatever you are studying. And the activities happen between two events. So, in other words, every activity starts at an event and ends at an event. And what is an event? Event is a point in time. In a day's calendar, it is the clock time. In a month's calendar, it is the date. In a week's calendar, it could be a day, for example, Sunday. Tuesday, etc. In a year's calendar, it could be a month, January, February, or if it is longer duration project, it could be the years 2016, 2017, 2018, etc. So these are nothing but points in time. Okay, fine. So these are two essential components of a network diagram. What is important is every activity that I am going to show is going to finally look like this. It starts at this event, ends at this event. Now see, the word event is somewhat confusing. We say event in the day-to-day -day life in a different context. For example, we say a birthday event. When we say birthday event, we are not talking about an event in the context of CPM world. An event in real life, when we talk about a birthday event or a marriage event, etc., they are actually activities. Event in the context of CPM world is just a point in time. And the time always flows in a certain direction from now onwards. I cannot go back. For example, if I start the lecture at 7 o'clock, there is no way of finishing the lecture today at 6 o'clock. I cannot go back in time. But if I start the lecture at 7 o'clock, I can finish it in the forward time that is 8 o'clock. Yes, it could be a 1 hour lecture, 2 hour lecture, 3 hour lecture, etc. But I cannot go back in time. That is important. So, time has a direction. And therefore, the activities also have a direction. Now, this activity, for example, if I say this is lecture, okay, it starts at event number 1 and it ends at event number 2. Event number 1 can be synonymous with 7 a.m. And event number 2 could be synonymous with 10 a.m. So, what is the duration of this activity? If it is a lecture starting at, let's say, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m., this lecture, the duration is 3 hours. So, typically on an activity, there could be a description of the activity or name of the activity such as activity, if I, I can write activity as a general thing or lecture for example and its duration, that is important. Now, typically for example, if, suppose you are traveling by car and one of the uh, tire of the car uh, goes punctured and then what do you do? You have to change the tire. Okay. 
Now, this is changing the tire is an activity. It starts at, let's say, 10 a.m. You are going to take one hour to do this. So, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. This is a small project which we can call it as changing of the tire of the car. You have a spare tire. You are going to replace that spare tire, uh, the old tire with the spare tire and your car will be running again. So, if this project, small project called a changing the tire, it is going to take one hour, we can say that the name of the activity is changing the tire. It starts at what time? Let's say 7 a.m. and it ends at what time? Let's say 8 a.m. So, 7 a.m. is an event in time, 8 a.m. is an event in time and the, between 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. what is happening is an activity and the name of the activity is changing the tire. Okay, so these essential things, once we understand these two essential things, that is an event and an activity. Activity is an arrow, event is a circle. Sometimes event is also known as node. So, essential components therefore, event also called as node and arrows, these are activities. If you learn the process of drawing the network diagram, these are the only two components which are written. And some additional information is also written on the network, such as what is the duration of each activity, okay? And what is the earliest time I can start the activity? What is the latest time I must finish this activity? And so on. All these details will be written in the network diagram, but the two essential main components or the basic components are an event and an activity. And that is all. And the te network technique is so simple that you will be surprised at the end how much information it can give, okay? Now, I'll start with a problem, which is actually question number one from your book. It's a simple network diagram. In the process of uh, solving this question, we'll come to know how to draw a network diagram, what are the essential components, how to use these essential components of event and activity, and how to draw the network diagram, then estimate how long will this project take me to complete. After estimating the uh, duration of the project, I'll come to know which are the activities which are most important or critical, which I cannot delay in any way. And some activities may emerge that, okay, I have some freedom or flexibility in respect of these activities. I can afford to delay these activities. Okay, fine. So, given that information, I will come to question number one. Write the relevant data from question number one. Remember, we are on chapter number four. The name of the chapter is Network Analysis. The main tools here are CPM and PERT. And I am writing the details from question number one from this book. My idea is to take you through the process of drawing the network diagram using a very simple uh, problem to start with. Remember, we always start with a simple problem and as soon as we learn the technique, we start making it more and more complicated. Now, look at this question number one. Uh, it, it reads like this. The time estimates of different activities of a project are given below. There is a table after that and it says draw the network diagram, number the events and find the critical path. Okay. Let's do this. So I'm writing the table. There are three columns in the table. First is activity name. Then second is predecessor activity. Predecessor activity. And last column is duration in days. How long each of the activities will take. Now, what are the names of the activities? There are six Activities only A, B, C, D, E and F. There are these six activities in this network diagram. What is the predecessor activity? I will explain, but I will first copy the table here. A predecessor activity for A is a dash, B is a dash, for C it is A, for D and E it is B, and for F it is C and D. What are the durations in terms of number of days? This is 6, 4, 3, 8, 14. Let's try to understand what is the information available from this uh, table. Okay. First column. There are six activities in this project and their names are A to F. Now see, sometimes it is convenient. Like see, I said lecture, OR lecture is an activity or changing the tire is an activity. Instead of giving the detailed descriptions of an activity, here we are writing some alphabetical names. Now, when I say A, it could mean any one of these. Okay. A, B, C, D, E, F. They have some descriptions. They are some real life activities. We are not really concerned with what are the real life activity names or what do they stand for. 
for any relationship table which looks like this our calculations are going to be same whatever a may stand for for example a may stand for acquire land b may stand for construct building c may stand for order machinery and so on so a b c d e f only six activities in this network in other words there are going to be at least six arrows in this network an activity is represented by an arrow therefore six activities so six arrows are definitely going to be there how many events will be there we do not know as of now so this is the first column now come to the second column second column tells me that against a there is a dash that means for a activity a there is no predecessor activity okay that means that a does not depend on anything else a can be started right away same situation with b in other words a and b are such activities which can be started immediately as soon as you start implementation of the project why but a does not depend on anything b does not depend on anything but come to c c depends on a that means c cannot be even started unless and until a is completed in other words in short i am explaining and bringing in a new concept of called as parallel activities and sequential activities what are parallel activities parallel activities are those which you can do at the same time they don't depend on anything they don't depend on each other so they can be done at the same time and what are sequential activities sequential activities are those which depend on something for example when you are changing the tire of a car obviously what is necessary is to remove the old tire first and only then you can put the new tire you cannot change this sequence you can't put the new tire first and then remove the old tire so putting up of the new tire is essentially presupposes that the old tire has been removed so before putting the new tire the activity which must be done is removing the old tire so these are sequential they must follow one another you can't change the sequence similarly here activity c depends on a that means activity c can be done only after a is completed the reverse is not possible activity a cannot be done after c is completed because c depends on a a does not depend on anything against a there is a dash correct now similarly activity b d is dependent on b so this column tells me on which activities the activities in the first column depend upon can you see that activity f is slightly different it depends on two things c and d in other words before undertaking activity by the name f f can be some real description for example taking trial runs of a machine okay what f stands for we are not concerned at this stage so if f depends on c and d what we understand is unless and until c and d are completely done activity f cannot even start and activity f will start only when c and d are complete and thereafter it will take 8 days this is what the table means for example activity e the longest activity in this network is this 14 days and here activity e cannot be done unless and until b is done and activity a after b is finished i can start e and how long e will take it will take 14 days so when is the earliest time when e will be over e requires that b should be complete okay b requires that nothing should be complete fine so b can be the first activity of the network b takes how many days b takes 4 days so unless and until b is over activity e cannot start and activity e is going to take 14 days after b is completed which is going to take 4 days in other words activity e will take at least 18 days for completion before e b must be completed b is going to take 4 days and after b is completed i can start activity e and e is going to take 14 days therefore 4 plus 14 18 days is the earliest possible time when e can be expected to be completed so this is the meaning of this table okay so having understood the meaning of this table the three columns which are essential for drawing the network diagram uh, the names of the activities obviously i need to know what are the activities for which i am drawing the network in this given question the activities are named as a to f six activities alphabetical names a b c d e f the second column tells me which activities must be completed before undertaking the activities in the first column and the third column gives me the duration in a unit of time over here it is number of days it could be number of weeks it could be number of months and so on okay now since the duration is given in days we'll draw a network diagram i said that 
the activities are of two types sequential and parallel what are sequential activities sequential activities are those which require some other activity to be completed before undertaking for example e requires that b should be completed so e is sequential to b okay e activity e activity e is sequential to activity b similarly activity d is sequential to activity b activity c is sequential to activity a and activity f is sequential to activities c and d okay the essential components arrow and an event event is a point in time not we understand not what we understand by the word event in day to day life what we understand day to day life the meaning of word event is actually an activity in the cpm pert context event is just a point in time it's a day or a date or a time in a day schedule etc now let me start drawing the network diagram as i said two essential components are a node or an event and an arrow okay activities a b c d e f will be represented by six different arrows okay and the network proceeds like this this is the start event start event is one when the project starts if i have a project comprising of six activities and the dependency relationship is as per the table given below here now i start the project at this event this event will be typically known as event number 1 the first event in the network diagram it will be known as event number 1 how many events are there in this network diagram there is no way to guess by looking at this relationship table all i can guess is there are six arrows because there are six activities so i am going to draw minimum six arrows okay now this is the first event i start the project which activities can i start immediately activities a and b i can start immediately in other words as soon as i start implementation of the project a and b can be started because a and b do not depend on anything else getting completed and activities are shown by an arrow so i'll say this is activity a this is activity b every activity must start at an event or a circle and every activity must end at an event or a circle so i must have a circle at the end of activity a i must have also a circle at the end of activity b and remember however simple the network may look like we have to draw a rough diagram first a pencil diagram and what happens is in the pencil diagram or the rough diagram many times changes are required to be made it may not happen in this problem but we'll see when it is required to be done and why it is required to be done so our objective is always draw a rough diagram and then once you are satisfied that the rough diagram correctly represents this relationship then we'll be able to write down the final diagram or the fair diagram okay so i am drawing the rough diagram now see once i look at this table i can understand two things which are the start activities of the project okay the start activities of the project are those activities which are not dependent on anything obviously the activities against which there is a dash are the activities which are the start activities of the project and what are the end activities see end activities will be those on which nothing depends on which nothing depends or after those activities there is nothing in the network diagram for example look at this out of a b c d e f the names featuring here in the second column are only a b c d that means something depends on a b c d what something what depends on a c depends on a what depends on b d and e depend on b what depends on c and d f depends on c and d but what depends on e nothing depends on e e is missing in the second column what else depends on f nothing depends on f therefore on e and f nothing depends in other words i am trying to find out which names of the activities are missing from the second column what i find is out of a b c d e f the names appearing in the second column are only a b c d so e and f are absent in the second column this suggests that e and f are the end activities of the project nothing depends on e and f therefore we write like this once we write once we look at the table we analyze this we say that start activities a and b end activities e and f in other words this is an essential information before i start drawing the network diagram what i understand is a and b are start activities of the project so i have drawn a and b every activity must start at an event which it has every activity must end at an event 
So these are the events at which these activities are ending. What are these event numbers? There are going to be some event numbers inside. All that I try to remember is A and B are the start activities and E and F are the end activities. I'll draw from here because I'll require more space. So A, B, activity ends here, activity ends here. So I have drawn actually A and B. Then I wish to draw C. Look at C. C depends on what? C depends on A. That means C cannot start unless A is complete. That means C can start when A is complete. And A is complete at which event? A is completed at this event. A started at this event. It got completed at this event. Therefore, over this, at this event, A is completed. Therefore, C can start. Okay. C has started where A is completed. Activity D depends on activity B. That means when B is completed, activity D can start. Okay, B is completed here, so activity D can start. Okay, all these activities, remember, are going to end at an event that we will draw. So D depends on B. D can start after B is completed. Similarly, as you see, E can also start when B is completed. In other words, when B is completed, there are two activities which can start. One of them is D and one of them is E. So I'll say this is E. Okay. E starts when B is completed. So end of B, end of B signifies beginning of two activities by the name C and D. So C and D have started, sorry, D and E have started when B is completed. Okay. Now we come here. Now it is slightly more complicated. F. F can start when both C and D are complete. In other words, unless and until C and D are both complete, activity F cannot start. So activity F, where does it start? Does it start at the end of C? Or does it start at the end of D? Activity F is dependent on C and D both. Therefore, what we do is, we join activity arrows C and D and end them in a particular event and I say that this is my activity D and now F can start when C and D are both over. Can you see that C and D are both over at this event and therefore at this event I can start activity F. Okay. Now E and F must end at events. But what was our analysis? Which were the end activities of the project? We said start activities are A and B and end activities are E and F. In other words, when E and F are both complete, that signifies the completion of the project. And therefore, once you identify that E and F are the end activities of the project, E and F must merge in a particular event and that event is the last event of this network diagram. In other words, I must somehow or the other merge E and F into one event. So I need to make little changes to the network diagram. I'll say that this is the end event of the network and I'll draw E now instead of like this. I'll draw E like this and F instead of drawing it like this since E and F must merge I'll draw F in this way and that is completion of the project this event marks the completion of the project this event marks the beginning of the project six arrows are represented by six straight lines here and an arrow is a straight line with a direction so the moment I draw an arrow in other words, I must draw a straight line first and put a direction. In other words, this activity E proceeds from here to here. If I don't put this direction, it will also mean that activity E proceeds from here to here. No, that is not correct. Activity E proceeds from this event to this event. Now, as you can see here, how many circles did I require to complete the diagram? One, two, three, four, five. Five circles. So, there are five events in this network diagram, which was not possible to guess beforehand. Only when we drew the network diagram, we come to know that there are five events in this network diagram. So five events, six arrows, six activities, and now we are ready to identify what is the critical path. Okay. Now before that, finding out the critical path, let me try to give numbers to these events. There is a certain procedure which is used for numbering the events. It is like this. Now since I have drawn the uh, rough diagram, now I will draw the fair diagram. Sphere diagram and rough diagram are both required for some purpose. So I'll 
consider this as the fair diagram because this is looking good enough. I need also a rough diagram, so I'll draw the rough diagram. A, B, this is C, this is D, then this is F and this is E. This is, this I'll call it rough diagram, this is my fair diagram. Now I require both. Now remember the purpose of numbering the events in a certain way. How many events are there? There are 5 events. So the event numbers are going to run from 1 to 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We cannot randomly number them as calling 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. No, not like this. That is not correct way of numbering the event. There is a certain procedure which needs to be followed in numbering the events. And what is the purpose of this procedure? The purpose of this procedure is such that an activity, any activity on this network, whether it is A to F, any one of them, must start at a lowered number event and end at a higher number event. For example, in another network diagram, I could have an activity like this which starts at event number 8 and ends at event number 10. Activity starts at event number 8, ends at event number 10. 10 is higher than 8. This is always valid. This is not a validly or correctly numbered activity. For example, the events are not correctly numbered if I write like this. An activity cannot start at event number 9 and end at event number 8. 8 is lower than 9. An activity cannot end at an event which has a number lower than the event at which it started. So the purpose of numbering in a certain way is that to ensure that all the activities A to F are such that they start at a lower number event, end at a higher number event. Can you see that the total number of events in this network diagram is five circles, so there are five events. And obviously, as I can see, this is event number one. The first event which we have drawn and this is event number 5. After 5 there is nothing in the network diagram. But how the numbers are to be given for 2, 3 and 4? That is very important. And for this we follow what is known as Fulkerson's rule. This is a certain small procedure which we must follow to number the events, the purpose of using Fulkerson's rule is to ensure that each and every activity of the network starts at a lower number event and ends at a higher number event. Okay, So we start numbering the events. After drawing the network diagram, rough and fair, both are ready with us. Now we start numbering the events, firstly in the rough diagram and thereafter in the fair diagram. So first step, identify which are the first activity of the network and before which event there is nothing in the network. That means in other words out of these five events there will be one event where no arrows are ending. There should be one event and exactly one event only in any network diagram where no arrows are ending. For example can you see that this is an event where arrow is ending, arrow is starting. This is an event where arrow is ending, arrow is starting. This is an event where arrows are ending, arrows are starting and so on. This is the only event where no arrows are ending, arrows are only starting. So this is my first event. There will be only such event, only one such event in any network diagram if it is drawn correctly. And there will be another event where arrows are only ending and not starting. Can you see that this is an event where arrows are only ending and no new arrows are starting. This is the last event. This is the first event. So obviously now we know which is the first event, event number 1 and which is the last event that is event number 5. Okay. So we number them like this. Identify an event where no arrows are ending and give it number 1. Okay. This is an event where no arrows are ending so I give it number 1. I give it number 1 over here as well. Okay. In my rough and fair diagram, I use the rough diagram to start with find out the event number and then translate it into the fair diagram. Okay, event number one has been numbered. <clears throat> now the next step, whichever events have been numbered, delete all those events along with activities starting from those events. Now how many events have been numbered so far? Only one and that is event number one. So delete event number one along with activities starting from event number one. How many activities are starting from event number one here? Two activities are starting from event number one and their alphabetical names are A and B. 
and how many events have been numbered so far only one okay so delete event number one along with arrows starting from event number one so event number one deleted arrows starting from event number one are a and b delete them this we do only in the rough diagram okay now this is the residual network now in this network identify if there is any event where no arrows are ending or which are the first fresh new start events okay can you see that this is an event now where no arrows are ending in the revised diagram this is an event when no arrows are ending arrows are only starting can you see that this is also an event when no arrows are ending arrows are only starting so these two are the next two events to be numbered okay event number already allotted event number one after numbering event number one what we did is we deleted event number one along with arrow starting from event number one so this network remained we are doing this in the network diagram which was called as a rough diagram now here which is the start event where no arrows are ending this is the start event where no arrows are ending this is also another start event where no arrows are ending in other words at this stage i can number two more events where no arrows are ending and those events obviously will be numbered two and three now whether this is two and this is three or this is two and this is three the choice is with you but i follow a certain procedure that whatever is coming at a higher level will be numbered first than what is coming at the lower level that means this is two and this is three this is my preferred way there is a reason for doing this why do i number something which is appearing at the top first and then what is appearing at the bottom there is a reason for doing this because a human eye is trained for processing the information from left to right and from top to bottom how do we read anything when we read a book how do we read it we go to the top of the page then we start on the left we go to the right again start on the left go to the right next line next line next line so human eye process the information from top to bottom and left to right that is precisely what i will do therefore after event number 1 what i should see immediately is event number 2 which must be this and not this okay while this is 2 and this is 3 is a correct way of numbering i follow this procedure that i'll first number this event and then this event therefore this is my event number 2 and this is my event number 3 so what is event number 2 beginning of activity c is event number 2 and beginning of activities d and e is event number 3 okay so out of five events three events are already successfully numbered what is the next step consider the events which are already numbered delete those events along with arrows starting from those events now how many events have been numbered so far three event number 1 is already deleted in the rough diagram now event number 2 and event number 3 also i will delete along with arrows starting from event number 2 and event number 3 so if event number 2 is now bit getting deleted i'll delete not only event number 2 and event number 3 i'll also delete arrows which are starting from event number 2 and event number 3 arrow starting from event number 2 stands deleted these are two arrows starting from event number 3 so these are also deleted and therefore what remains in this rough diagram is only activity f remember events 1 2 3 have been numbered now find out those events in the network diagram where no arrows are ending can you see that this is the only event where no arrows are ending this is still an event where this arrow is ending so what can be numbered only those event where no arrows are ending can be numbered and therefore the next number to be given will be 4 and therefore this is 4 and obviously therefore this is 5 so i'll write this as 4 and this as 5 okay events have been numbered the procedure which we followed for writing the event numbers from 1 to n is called as fulkerson's rule the detailed description of this fulkerson's rule will appear in your notes which are being given along with the lectures and therefore we will practice this rule so many times that you will become a master of it okay now events have been numbered and this is my network diagram okay now the purpose of rough network diagram is over so this is my final network diagram okay now i'll add some more information to this network diagram the durations we have not taken into account the durations so far we'll write on the respective arrows 
the duration in days of all these activities. For example, activity A, the duration is 6. So I write here 6. Activity B is 4. So I write here 4. Activity C is 3. So I'll write here 3. D is 8. Similarly, E is 14. And F is 8. So these are the durations of various activities. Fine. Now what next? We want to find out the critical path. Critical path is the longest path in the network. And what are the paths? Imagine this arrows as some kind of roads. In other words, I must start my journey at event number one, end my journey at the last event, that is event number five. How many roads are possible? If I were to travel only in the direction of arrows, in how many different ways can I reach event number five? Okay. Imagine that these are actually two places in a city and these are various roads. In how many ways can I start at one and end my journey at five? One road which can be obviously seen is, I go from event number one to two, two to four and four to five. I am traveling on this arrow, this arrow and this arrow. In other words, the route which I am suggesting is A, C and F. How long will this take? It will take six days plus three days plus eight days, six plus three plus eight. That is 17 days to start at event number one and reach event number five. So I'll say path A, C, F. I'm going via activities A, C, F. This will take me 17 days, which is equal to 6 plus 3 plus 8. This is 17. What are the other routes of starting at 1 and ending at 5? B, D, F. See, I can travel like this from event number 1, I can go to event number 3. From event 3, I can go to event 4. And from event 4, I can go to event 5. I take this route in the direction of arrows. And what is the duration of this? 4 plus 8 plus 8. And what is the root called as? B, D, F. So, root B, D, F. We'll take 4 plus 8 plus 8. That is 20 days. B, D, F root will take 20 days. Is there any other road going from 1 to 5? Yes. B, E. For example, I travel from 1 to 3 and then 3 to 5. I am traveling on the arrows only and in the direction of arrows. So this is also one possible route. So 1, 3, 5 also called as B, E. So another route is B, E. And what is the duration of this? 4 plus 14, 18. And the route can be called as B, E. And the duration is 4 plus 14, that is 18. Okay. So these are three roads going from event number one to event number five. Imagine these as actual roads. The only condition is all the roads are one way. You have to start at event number one. You have to reach event number five. And what are the three different ways of reaching event number five? One is one, two, four, five or called as ACF first route. Then one, three, four, five called as BDF second route. And third route, 135, called as BE, and this is 18 days. Critical path is the longest path between the first to the last event. And first to the last event, the longest path, as we can see, is 20 days. In other words, one conclusion which we can draw is that this project will take at least 20 days for completion. It can never be done before end of 20 days. Okay. Because see, now what is the logic? In other words, activities which are on the critical path, what are the activities in the critical path? B, D, F. So I'll mark them separately to show that there is something special about these activities. I'll mark them by a double bar. So a double bar could be B, D, F. These activities are different than the other activities. See, out of six activities in the network, what I'm marking as important or B, D, F, which I have marked, and what is their duration? 4, 8 and 8. What is the total? 8 plus 8 plus 4, 20. That is the length of the critical path. In other words, the total of this column is meaningless. 
total of this column has nothing to do with the duration of the project. What is important is what is the duration of critical activities. And which are the critical activities? Those activities which lie on the longest path are the critical activities. So BDF totaling to 4 plus 8 plus 8 that is 20 is the longest path in this network. Now why is the longest path the critical path? I will explain. Okay. Now imagine this, I'm, I, I have identified the critical path and the critical path happens to be BDF and the total duration of BDF happens to be 20 days. Therefore, I am saying that this project has a duration of 20 days. Whatever you do, you can never do this project before the end of 20 days. The reason is activity F depends on two activities C and D of which D is critical. So I am looking only at D. Activity F is going to take 8 days after D is completed. And D itself is going to take 8 days. So 8 plus 8, 16 so far. And activity D can be done only when B is completed. And B itself takes 4 days. Therefore, this 16 days is after completion of 4 days. Therefore, 4 plus 8 plus 8, 20 is the duration of this project. Now imagine there are two places in a city called as, uh, I'll call it place P. These are not event numbers and another place is called as Q. There are three different ways in which you can travel from place P to place Q. What are the three different ways? Suppose I have three teams by the name, let's say, uh, uh, I'll say L, M, N. These are my three teams. Team L must travel by the highway. On the highway, there are hardly any signals. Therefore, this is a good way to travel from point P to point Q. All teams, LMN, are traveling from point P to point Q, which are two places in a city. Okay. In Mumbai, for example, it could be Bandra and Borili. Okay. Now, L team has to go by highway. Team L has to go by highway. Team N, the second team in this competition, has to go by a city road, not highway. And city road, as you would expect, will have several signals. And therefore, the journey time on this city road is going to be more than the journey time undertaken by Team L. Now, Team N, my last team, this team has the mandate that they must travel by a local train. So, the three teams have to take three different ways. They have to start, all of them have to start their journey at P and end the journey at Q. And how the teams proceed is like this. This team goes by highway. This team is L. Another team has to go by city road and then reach here. This is city road. And the name of the team is N, M. And there is another team which has to go by train. And this team is called as N. And they have to go by the local train. Okay. Now my question is, which team will start at you? They are all starting at the same time. They have to start the race all at the same time. And when this project is completed... This project will be completed only when all the three teams reach at Q. Okay. And there is some subsequent activity which they are undertaking at place Q. Okay. Now remember, three teams are starting. Three teams are starting. All of them are starting at the same time from a place called as P. All of them are traveling to a place called as Q. And they are taking three different roads. For example, team L is taking highway. Team N is taking, M is taking city road and team N is taking local train. What would be your expectation that which team will reach fastest? Local train. Local train team will reach fastest because it goes at the rate of the train. The train journey would be faster than the highway journey or for that matter city road definitely. Because train has no signals to encounter which are there on the traffic on the road. And therefore team N will be the first team to reach point Q. Which is the next train, which will, which is the next team that will reach point Q? In all probabilities, it will be the team 
name L, because it is going by highway, it will have lesser signals and therefore it will go, the road journey will be faster. Team remember, L and M are going by road, team N is the only team going by train. So first team to reach will be local train and that is called as team N. Suppose this local train uh, team takes let's say 40 minutes. Okay. Next team to reach at point Q is the team which goes by highway or called as a highway team and the name of the team is L. Suppose this takes 70 minutes okay. and the last team to reach will be the one which is going by city road. So I will say city road and the name of the team is M. This will take let us say 90 minutes of journey. Objective of all the three teams start at P, go to Q. When can I say that all the three teams have reached point Q? What will be the time? If team N takes 40 minutes, if team L takes 70 minutes and team M takes 90 minutes and it is essential that all the three teams must reach point Q, which team will decide when this project is complete? Obviously the one which takes longest time. But unless and until team M also reaches point Q, this project is not complete. Therefore the longest path the team taking the longest path will decide when the project can be completed at the earliest. Exactly same thing that we are talking about. The team which take the longest path 4 plus 8 plus 8, 20 days will decide the project duration. The next team over here, this is the team which is taking longest path. Which is the next team? Path 4 plus 14, path BE will be the next one to reach after 18 days. And the path taken by team going via ACF will be 6 plus 3 plus 8 that is 17. So this team will reach first, this team will reach next and the last team to reach in this network diagram will be the team going via BDF and therefore the longest path in the network is the path which is critical and that also signifies the duration of the project and the duration of this simple project is 20 days and that is sum of all the durations of critical activities which we have marked by double bar and what are the activities marked by double bar? B, D and F. Therefore, idea is whenever we draw a network, find out all the paths from the first to the last event. First to the last event, find out all the paths, not only find out all the paths, find out the durations of each path by totaling up the durations of activities on that path and one of them is going to be longest and that longest path is the critical path. Just as in this case 20 was the longest path, next longest path was 18, next longest path was 17, 20 was the longest therefore duration of this project is 20 days. In other words can you see now we are getting some more idea that if any one of the activities BDF are delayed even to the extent of one day. For example, instead of taking four days, this activity takes five days. Instead of taking eight days, this activity takes nine days. Or for that matter, this activity, instead of taking eight days, it will take nine days. Can you see that easily 20 will become 21? Longest path, instead of 20, it will become 21. In other words, the critical path is that path which in terms of project implementation, we must concentrate our effort, all our effort must be done to ensure that there is no delay on the critical path. Because if there is a delay on the critical path, my project is going to be delayed. Fine. Now look at this for example, the other non-critical activities are A, C is, A is not critical, no double bar, C is not critical and E is not critical. Suppose there is a delay of one day on any one of these activities. Let's say for example activity A is delayed by one day. Then what happens? 6 becomes 7. Fine. So 7 plus 3 plus 8, this path instead of 17, it will become 18. But that is not the longest path. The longest path is still here taking 20 days. So the project will not be delayed. Only thing what will happen is activity A individually is delayed by one day. Does not affect the project implementation. Or instead of this activity, suppose this activity is delayed by one day. Then what happens? It is 6 plus 4 plus 8, that is also 18. In other words, there is no delay in the project, but the longest path remains 20. 
What about this activity which is not critical? Suppose instead of 14 days, it takes 15 days. Then what happens on this path? 4 plus 15 will be 19, not 20. In other words, even if there is a delay to the extent of 2 days on this activity, instead of 14, it becomes 15. Instead of 15, it becomes 16. Even then, 4 plus 16 will still be 20 and my project can still be managed within 20 days. So, in other words, by looking at this project, right now I have got some information that these activities are critical. These three activities are critical, but the activities which are not critical are those activities which are not yet marked as critical and therefore we can afford to have some delay non-critical, non-critical here and non-critical here. So three activities which are critical, three activities which are non-critical is the total of six activities in the project. This is also non-critical, this is also non-critical. In other words, out of six activities A, B, C, D, E, F, only activities B, D and F are critical and activities A, C and E are not critical. In other words, we can afford to have some delay in respect of activities A, C and E. And that delay does not affect the network diagram or does not affect the critical path and my project can still be completed in 20 days. Obviously, I am presuming that there is only some delay, not inordinate delay. For example, activity A, instead of taking 6 days, if it starts taking 20 days, then obviously my project will be delayed. But there is some freedom or flexibility associated with activities A, C and E and there is no freedom or flexibility associated with activities B, D and F. Therefore, what we have understood from the first problem is what are the critical activities, how to identify them. Firstly, how to draw the network diagram, taking into account the relationship table which is given, show a rough diagram and then followed by a fair diagram, use the rough diagram for numbering of events. What is the purpose of numbering the events? The purpose of numbering the events is to ensure that every activity in the network starts at a low number event and ends at a high number event. Let's examine this network which we have drawn. Look at activity A. Starts at 1, ends at 2. 2 is higher than 1. Activity B. Starts at 1, ends at 3. 3 is higher than 1. So it is correctly numbered. Activity C. 2 to 4. Correct. Activity D. 3 to 4, 4 is higher, so fine. Activity F, 4 to 5, correct. And activity E, 3 to 5, 5 is higher than 3, fine. But in other words, I cannot have a situation like this, that this becomes 5 and this becomes 4. Wrong. Because if I do that, activity F will be starting at 5 and ending at 4. Not correct. The end event must be higher in number than the start event. So. This is the way to draw the network diagram which we have seen. How to find out the critical path. For simple projects this works. For a few activities like this it works. But can you imagine that if there are several activities. For example if I bring in 10 to 12 activities. You want make it little more complicated. Can you see that sometimes you may miss out on finding out all the paths from the first to the last event. And it may be possible that that is the critical path. And you have missed out to list out that path itself. Here, for example, it may not suddenly occur to you that BDF is also one path. You may understand ACF, but you may miss out on BDF or for that matter BE. That can happen. Here it is a simple diagram. It is not likely to happen. But in a little more complicated diagram, it is possible to miss out on one of the paths to be listed to find out the duration of the path and then identifying the critical path. If you have missed out one path and if that path happens to be the critical path, your calculations will all go wrong. Therefore, this is not the correct and the foolproof procedure for finding. This is good enough. If you can list out all the paths, this procedure is good enough. But if there are more activities, this is not the correct way of finding the critical path. We will follow a structured process called as a forward path and a backward path calculation. We will do that when we go there. And after this problem, therefore, we will go to question number two. But before that, what we have understood in this question number one? Only the technique to draw the network diagram, looking at the relationship table, how to draw the network diagram is what we have understood. We will take this information as done and question 2 that we will be doing after this, we will draw the network diagram, 
First thing is draw a rough diagram, draw a fair diagram. After that, number the events using the rough diagram. Go on deleting the activities and events in the rough diagram. Go on numbering the events in the fair diagram. Then find out the various paths from first to the last event. And also find out which is the critical path. Mark the activities as critical, little differently than the others. Put it double bar or make a thick line or something. And draw those critical activities separately. So that will tell us which activities are paramountly important. And which activities are not so important, which we can afford to delay a little bit. So that is part of question number two. Right now, therefore, we have completed question number one as appearing in the book. Okay. Thank you.